In this video, I'm going to show you how to assess low tolerance in patients with Achilles tendinopathy. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Examination of pain severity and low tolerance is an important part of the clinical evaluation of patients with Achilles tendinopathy. It guides activity modification and exercise prescription and progression advice in tendinopathy. According to Malieras in 2022, low tolerance assessment involves three components. Number one, assess self-reported pain intensity during Achilles tendon loading activities. Number two, if the pain increases after these activities, assess how long it takes to return to preloading pain levels. And number three, assess self-reported pain intensity on a pain rating scale during a progressive loading task, usually on the NIS from 0 to 10. In general, pain levels are assessed on a numeric pain rating scale. Activities with pain rated up to 5 out of 10 are deemed acceptable. Pain and disability due to Achilles tendinopathy is best assessed using the validated FISA A score that you can find on our website. Now, let's look how a stepwise approach could look like to determine low tolerance. This approach is based on unpublished research on force values by Igor Sancho and expressed in terms of X times body weight. So how can we apply this concept in practice? Say a patient comes to you and reports a pain intensity of 2 out of 10 during walking, a 4 out of 10 during running, and an 8 out of 10 on a single leg hop. Then personally, I would like to have concrete numbers such as walking distance or running distance next to the pain intensity the patient is reporting. So say a patient says that her goal is to return to running 10 kilometers again at a pace of 10 kilometers per hour. At the moment, she's running three kilometers at a speed of eight kilometers per hour, which gives her a pain of four out of 10, which settles within a couple of hours. Then I would be curious about her pain rating if we pushed a little bit more. We could suggest that she runs four kilometers at the same speed and see if she can still perform this activity with tolerable pain. Next, I'd be curious if the pain also decreases back to baseline within 24 hours. 
If this is the case, then we know that she can tolerate running for 4 km at a speed of 8 km per hour. As a next step, we can further increase the distance she is running in a stepwise manner until she has reached the distance she wants to get back to. As a general guideline, I am first trying to increase mileage or running volume before I increase speed. It is vital in the rehabilitation of injured runners that we increase only one variable at a time. If my patient's goal is not necessarily to get back to running, but if I am dealing with an athlete who performs lots of jumps or hops, such as a tennis or basketball player, I might first look at his hop tolerance. So if he is reporting a pain of 7 out of 10 during 3 times 10 single leg hops, I would try to decrease the volume to maybe 2 times 6 and see if he can perform the hops with tolerable pain of a maximum of 5 out of 10. On top of that, you want to check again if a possible pain increase settles to baseline within 24 hours. If his flare-up lasts longer than 24 hours, or if he cannot perform 2 times 6 single leg hops, we have to further regress to less volume or go back to double leg hops. I will further regress until I find an appropriate load level that the patient can tolerate and gradually increase from there. All right, this was our video on assessing load tolerance in Achilles tendinopathy. If you would like to learn more about running rehab, check out our Running Rehab from Pain to Performance online course 2.0, which we will launch on the 12th of August in 2023. For more information, check out the link in the video description. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.